Hey, Larry Taylor here. Thanks for joining me. I don't think it's any secret that uh, Donald Trump's political success has been due, at least in part, to a backlash against um, <clears throat> Barack Obama's presidency. Uh, I don't think that's a super controversial statement. I hope it doesn't offend you. Um, but that isn't what I want to talk about. Uh, I do want to talk about backlash uh, for just a few minutes. Um, theologically, <clears throat> a lot of what we see is kind of a swing back and forth like a pendulum. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we go back to the uh, late 19th century, we find a uh, movement among, primarily among German theologians, that's where it started, um, of examining the biblical text in a critical fashion. Um, and I don't mean to, don't want to confuse that with um, um, criticism. It's not necessarily the same thing. Um, but that the idea behind it was that the biblical text is a text. Um, like any ancient text, uh, it therefore uh, can be subjected, and many would say should be subjected, uh, to the same kinds of analyses that uh, one would um, uh, use to examine any other ancient Near Eastern text. Um, and of course, uh, lots of different disciplines play into that, um, including, uh, among others, uh, anthropology and uh, uh, geology and all sorts of things. Um, some of those theologians um, essentially came to the conclusion that um, miracles don't exist. Um, I, I think looking back on it, they started with the assumption that miracles don't exist and then went through and uh, um, either explained away or dismissed as myth uh, all of the miracles in the Bible, um, including, uh, for some of them, the resurrection of Jesus. Um, so there was a reaction against that. Um, and that reaction was um, originally called fundamentalism. Uh, it got that name from a, a group of uh, scholars got together, and they published a, a book, which is still available today, called The Fundamentals. Uh, and in it, they um, explained what they felt were the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Um, now, uh, that was their reaction against the pendulum swing uh, over to this critical side. And of course, the critical side itself was a reaction to a, a kind of uh, state church orthodoxy, which um, uh, read the Bible in such a way as to dismiss uh, science, to insist, for example, that the that the world is flat and that um, the earth is the center of the universe and that kind of thing. So fundamentalism itself initially was a pendulum swing, a reaction, a backlash against uh, a form of looking at the scripture which was um, irrational and uh, unscientific. And then uh, that movement created a backlash. Um, uh, the fundamentalist movement created a backlash um, down the road uh, as fundamentalism became uh, more and more uh, legalistic and more and more uh, literalistic and really changed from the way that it originally was. Um, if you take the individuals who 
<clears throat> wrote the chapters in that book called The Fundamentals. Uh, people like George Campbell Morgan, for example, was one of them. Um, almost without exception, probably without exception, all of those people uh, would not be referred to as fundamentalists today. If they were alive today, uh, we would say they were evangelical Christians. Uh, because fundamentalism changed. Um, fundamentalism started out as just simply saying these are the fundamentals, and we're hanging on to those fundamentals, and uh, we're not going to explain those away, and uh, we're not going to approach the biblical text uh, with this preconceived idea that uh, God uh, cannot possibly predict the future, and with the preconceived idea that miracles cannot possibly happen. Uh, that is an erroneous way to study anything with those that itself is unscientific to approach any subject with preconceived ideas you've uh, come to the conclusion before you've even looked at the evidence um, and so um, uh, there was a, uh, a backlash to uh, that created that that original fundamentalism um, and then that original fundamentalism, uh, over the course of the decades, got more and more, um, as I said, legalistic, and more and more strict, and more and more focused on, um, you, know, you can't drink, and you can't chew, and whatever you do, don't run with boys that do. Um, and it was concerned with um, the way people dressed and the style of their hair and the kind of music they were listening to and it, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so there was a, a backlash against that, which became evangelicalism. And uh, um, of course, one of the uh, um, primary movers in reacting against fundamentalism and creating uh, a more modern evangelicalism uh, was Billy Graham, um, who looked at that fundamentalism and uh, said, uh, "Yes, you know, miracles happen. Yes, Jesus literally rose from the dead, um, but no, our emphasis does not need to be on um, men having short hair and women not wearing makeup." Um, and so. The evangelical movement was a backlash against the fundamentalism movement. Well, evangelicalism has slowly changed over time and has become uh, associated in the United States. This is not the case in any other country, uh, very clearly not the case in Europe um, or elsewhere. The, uh, but the evangelical movement in the United States, let me qualify that, and this is an important qualification, the white evangelical movement in the United States um, has changed and become associated with uh, right-wing politics, with libertarianism, um, with... Um, an Ayn Rand kind of um, individual freedom uh, above all others. It's, it's become associated with nationalism. Um, and uh, so it itself has changed, and that's creating a backlash. Um, especially people um, who are um, well, well, the uh, let me let me think about my generations here. Uh, millennials, uh, who would be um, mid forties down to late twenties. Um, Generation Z, uh, who would be people in their um, <clears throat> in their twenties and late teens. So. Um, college and career age folks. Um, and the generation after that, um, I'm not sure what name they're giving to that one yet, um, 
but they would be the people uh, who are currently in high school, junior high school, that kind of thing. Uh, so those three generations in the United States um, are reacting against what evangelicalism has become. And so there's a backlash against inerrancy. Um, younger people looking at the scriptures and saying uh, the idea that there are no mistakes whatsoever uh, in this in this whole text is is simply not true. It's not tenable. Um, young people look at much of white evangelicalism, and they say, "Well, you're you're equating belief in the Bible uh, with." Um, uh, sort of a magical six-day creation story that you claim happened six or ten thousand years ago. And that's contrary to all the scientific evidence. And if, in fact, God did that in such a way as to make it contrary to all the scientific evidence, then that leaves us with uh, God purposely deceiving people. So there's a backlash against inerrancy. There's a backlash against rejecting science. Uh, there's a backlash against um, traditional sexual morality. Um, a backlash against saying um, that um, uh, gay and lesbian sexuality is um, a sinful choice that people choose to make. Whereas most younger people would say it appears, at least in uh, many instances, to be more genetically hardwired than that. So there's a backlash against that. There's a backlash against nationalism. And I think that's the strongest one. That's probably the primary reason why uh, younger people, people under 40, are uh, leaving churches in droves. And they're not just leaving liberal churches, they're leaving uh, evangelical churches, they're leaving mega churches. Um, they are uh, almost running away because they see the white evangelical church in America as connected with um, the Republican Party, and they see that even the Republican Party has changed radically. Uh, from the days of uh, George Herbert Walker Bush and uh, George W. Bush and um, Mitt Romney, um, folks like that, um, they say that, that the Republican Party today is now the party of Trump. It's the party of the ultra-right wing. It's a party, young people would say, that often embraces racism that's more concerned about um, people smashing store windows and stealing shoes than it is about police brutality. Um, and so there's a backlash against um, what is perceived to be a, a union of evangelical white, evangelical Christianity uh, with um, right wing, politics. Um, so uh, again, a backlash. Um, sin uh, has been defined uh, traditionally by evangelicals as something that is wrong that I choose to do individually. Um, Younger people tend to see uh, sin as a social construct. Um, so we see this swing back and forth, um, almost with a sense of regularity. Um, new generations examining what has become encrusted in the older generations and swinging to the opposite extreme. The danger in that is, uh, in swinging either way, the danger is in 
throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, yes, the biblical text should be examined uh, like what it is, a, an ancient Near Eastern text. And yes, uh, it can, some of the same um, literary analyses can be applied to it. Um, but we don't do that with the preconceived idea that there's no such thing as miracles and no such thing as the uh, resurrection. Um, yes, there are fundamentals that we hold to. But in holding to those fundamentals, we don't have to become legalistic and harsh. Um, yes, morality is important. Uh, but in embracing morality, we don't have to become uh, intolerant and rejecting of others, including others that don't see it the way we do. Um, the important thing is to recognize that there is this swing back and forth, and all of us get caught up in that swing, and the danger for all of us is in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We need to hold to that which is true and let go of that which is merely social construct. We need to remember that we are not Democrats. We are not Republicans. We are not um, nationalists. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. We are called to follow Jesus. And when we do, we won't fit in with any of those extreme swings back and forth. Instead, we will be walking in such a way as to be filled with the love of Christ, radiating that love to others. God bless you.